In this video, we are going to make our arrows stick to the targets when we shoot at them and we are going to add some sounds to improve our VR archery experience. Okay, let's get going. To make our arrows stick to whatever we shoot at, we need to instantiate a new prefab since this will be the easiest way to remove the additional rigid body that we do not need when the arrow is sticking to the uh, object. So first, we need to go to our assets, prefabs, and we are going to select arrow parent. Let's actually drag it into our project. Now we can remove from it, or actually, first of all, let's rename it to sticking arrow. Now let's remove the arrow rotation from it and let's remove the rigid body as well. Let's extend this and we are going to select the arrow. We can disable the sphere collider. But we want to enable the box collider if i select this uh, sticking r and press f we're going to see that now the collider will take the shape of the whole arrow so if we hit any object that moves it will be added to the colliders uh, affecting the rigid body and we can select the arrow extend it let's select the trail and we are going to disable it so that we do not have it it is not active when the arrow is sticking to an object great so now what we can do is simply drag the sticking arrow to our prefabs folder and let's select create an original prefab. So this will be our new prefab that we are going to instantiate when our arrow hits a target. Now to make sure that we can actually instantiate it, we need to create a new script and attach it to our arrow parent. So let's go to our assets, scripts, we are going to right click, create a new c -sharp script. Let's call it sticking arrow to surface or whatever you want to call it and let's open this script up great so let me paste the fields that we are going to use here we're going to have a private rigid body rigid body uh, this will be a serialized field we are going to have a serialized field private sphere collider my collider since uh, we need a sphere collider because the arrow has two colliders so that's why i have specified sphere collider and we are going to have a serialized field private game object sticking arrow this is the arrow that we are going to instantiate when we hit some object using our arrow next to actually perform the instantiation we are going to create on collision enter method and here we have the reference to the collision collision so the object basically that we have hit let me paste the code here so first of all, when we hit something, we are going to call our rigid body is kinematic to true, and we are going to call my collider is trigger to true. Now I'm not sure if this is required, but I don't want my arrow to be rotated in a strange way uh, because I want to access the transform position and forward direction of the arrow when it hits an object. So that's why I have provided those two lines. Next, we are instantiating game object arrow equals instantiate sticking arrow. So this is our prefab and we are going to set arrow transform position equals the transform position of this arrow that we are shooting that has hit a collider. And we are going to set arrow transform forward equals to the transform dot forward of again this arrow that was just flying and has hit a collider. Next, we have an if statement because we need to check if we want to parent the sticking arrow to the object or not. In case the object has a rigid body, so it is a moving object. So if collision.collider.attached rigid body is not null, so the rigid body attached to this collider is not null, meaning the object that we have hit is moving or it can potentially move, we want to parent our arrow to this object. So arrow transform.parent equals collision dot collider dot attached rigid body dot transform this should parent our arrow to the object that has the rigid body now do mind that this isn't perfect solution uh, because if the transform so the object that has a rigid body is scaled non-uniformly the arrow will get rotated in a strange way and we are going to see in when we run the game that the arrows sometimes do get uh, rotated in a strange way i'm not quite sure why if you have a better solution or you know why let me know down in the comments for now the next line is collision.collider get component i hitable question mark dot 
get hit. So this is null color listing operator. So if it, uh, the I hitable is not null, we're going to call get hit on it. This is the code that I have provided for you. If you right click on this I hitable and go to the definition or click F12, you're going to find this moving target script. Basically, this is attached to the targets that are moving around in our scene. They are moving in a run to the random position and they have this get hit method that reduces the health and if health is less or equal to zero, we are going to set the rigid body to be kinematic. We are going to stop the movement. So basically the targets will fall down onto the ground with the arrow sticking from them. But this is just to add some gameplay elements to the project. Okay, let's go back to our sticking arrow to surface script and let's save this because this is it for this uh, script. Although we have one more line, destroy game object. So after we have instantiated the sticking arrow, we're going to basically destroy our arrow because we no longer need it. Okay, so now let's save this. Let's go back to Unity. Okay, so let's select our prefabs and let's select our arrow parent. And here we are going to add this sticking arrow component. So let's add this type sticking. And we should find sticking arrow to surface the script that we have created. Let's drag here the rigid body reference. We need to open the prefab to assign the my collider since this is the arrow child object. Let's drag it here and we are going to provide the sticking arrow. So our prefab. OK, let's go back from this prefab. In the hierarchy, I have left the sticking arrow. We do not uh, longer need it. So let's delete this from the hierarchy. But before we test our new setup in the assets, in the uh, sounds folder i have provided for a couple of sounds this is the bow being shot the second one is impact the third one is a string being pulled and the fourth one is just the target falling down on the ground so i'm going to select our prefabs our sticking arrow and i'm going to add here an audio source and i'm going to select the clip and let's select the impact clip. So basically on awake, the impact clip will be created. So when we instantiate our sticking arrow, the impact sound will be played. So this will add this additional sound to our game. Make sure that you select the special blend and let's set it to be 3D since this is pretty important. Okay, so that's it for the sound. Now I think we are ready to test our setup. So let's press play. Okay. If everything went well, we should be able to have some fun now. So let me try shooting the target. And as you can see, the target falls down. It makes sound and the arrow is sticking to the target. And it is uh, causing a sound. Now, as you can see, the collision detection isn't perfect, but it works uh, pretty decent enough for our purpose. OK, great. So we have seen how much the sound has added to the experience. So if we expand the bow game object, you will find that we have the bow string audio source and bow release audio source. Both are prepared. Now we should set the spatial blend for 3D, probably for those. But besides that, we have those sounds prepared. So now we are going to select the bow evil game object. We are going to select the arrow controller first to apply the bow release sound when we let go of an arrow. So let's select our arrow controller and let's edit this script. Okay. All we need to do here is add a serialized field private audio source bow release audio source. And we are going to trigger it when we release our arrow. Basically, we are going, what we are going to do is bow or release audio source dot play and it will play our sound. So this is it, what we need to add to our arrow controller. Let's save the script. Let's go back to Unity. OK, so let's select our arrow controller and let's drag to it bow release audio source. And this should work. Now, before we test it, if you want, you can test it right now. I'm going to try add the string sound. So when we pull the string and push it back towards the bow, we need to uh, add some sound to it for the VR experience to work for us. So we're going to select our bow string controller and let's edit this script in turn. OK, now here is a tricky bit because we need to play the sound in increments. So based on how we are pulling the string or pushing it, we want to pause and unpause our audio source to play the sound uh, 
normally or in reverse to add the sound when we are pulling or pushing the string. For this to work, we need to add a couple of parameters. So beside the strength, we are going to also uh, save the previous strength to calculate the difference to decide if you want to play the sound or not. Now for this to work, we are going to need to have another float value. So we are going to create serialized field private float string sound threshold value. We are going to set it to 0.001F. And basically, based on this and the difference between the current strength and the previous strength, we are going to pause or unpause playing the string being pulled sound. So to actually play the sound, we need to, of course, have the audio source reference. So serialized field, private audio source, audio source. Okay, so let's add the rest of the code. So we need to find the reset bow string code. And here we have resetted the strength. So we need to add a previous strength uh, set to be zero line. We need to set the audio source dot pitch to be one. And this is because if we pause and unpause our audio source, we can place the sound in reverse. If we set the pitch to be minus one, it will be played, it will be playing the sound in reverse. So that's why we are setting here the pitch to be one. So when we start playing the bow sound again, we're going to play it normally. And we are going to stop the audio source because when we play it again, we want to play it from the beginning. Okay, but the bulk of the logic for it will be in our update or actually in the handle uh, methods for different stages when we are pulling the string. So first of all, let's go to our handle pulling string. Now basically, when we start pulling the string, we need to start playing the sound. So we are going to have this if statement. If audio source is playing equals false and the strength is less or equal to 0.01f, this means that we haven't yet started playing the sound, so we're going to call audio source dot play. Now this will only start playing the sound, now we need to control how it is played. So at the end of this method, we are going to call play so a string pulling sound. Okay, so let's right click on this method and quick action and generate this method. Let me paste the code for it and let me try to explain it. Now this is not perfect solution, but basically what we are going to do is we are going to check if we have moved the string enough to play the sound. In this case, we want to unpause it. So we are going to check if mathf.abs strength minus private strength is greater than the string sound threshold. Now actually I have forgot yet to set the previous strength. So let's continue with this method for now. So basically, based on this, we are going to check if strength is less than the previous strength. This means that we want to play the sound in reverse because we are pushing the string towards the bow. And that's where the audio source dot pitch equals minus one comes. This will allow us to play the sound in reverse. Else, if the strength is greater than the previous strength, we are going to set the audio source dot pitch equals one. And we, are, we need to unpause the audio. So audio source dot unpause. Because otherwise, if we call play and stop, we are not going to be able to use this minus one for the pitch to play the sound in reverse. At least that's what I think. And else, if we haven't moved enough our string, we are going to set audio source dot pause. Okay, now let's go back to our update because here, before we start changing the strength, we are going to assign previous strength equals to the strength. So this is the strength from the previous frame saved here. And next we can compare how much we have moved our string. Okay, so let's, let's head to the handle string pulled back to the limit. Now the best thing that I came up with is audio source.pause here. So we are going to pause the audio source, which can cause some problems because if we are moving very fast towards the end or to the limit of the uh, string, but then start pushing the string very slowly we might run out of the sound to be played so this might be tricky uh, but uh, basically that's the best i came up with for playing the sound and last thing that we need to do is handle string pushed back to start here we want to set audio source dot pitch uh, and this will be uh, set to one so we want to again play the sound uh, by default forward and we want to set audio source dot stop so that we start playing the sound 
from the beginning. So we are going to play it from the start to have the most amount of sound to be played. Okay, and basically this is it. This is how I have figured to play the sound incrementally when we are pulling and pushing the string. So let's save this script and let's go back to Unity. Okay, great. So now what we need to do is select our bow string controller and let's assign here the audio source. So our bow string audio source and this should be it. So let's try pressing play and see if it works. Okay, so let's see if everything went well. We should be able to pick up the bow and start pulling the string. And we should hear the sound. Okay, and sometimes you might hear that the sound breaks. This means that we have run out of sound. So again, this is something that needs to be improved. But basically, now if we let go of the arrow, you should hear the release sound. You should hear the bow string sound. And as you can see, we can now shoot to those targets. And now it really seems like a virtual bow experience, at least to me. We can see those arrows sticking. And as you can see, there, there, there it is. The arrow is sticking in a strange way to the block. So this is what I have mentioned, that this logic needs some improvement. But this is what I came up with. Okay, great. Let's stop the game. Okay, and that is it for this tutorial. I hope that you have enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel or click the thanks button down below to support the channel. I would really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next tutorial.